Hello, I'm Amanda Fielding and thank you for inviting me today and I'm so very sorry not to be here at this great event. We're now living in a world where modern society is entering a mental health epidemic. In the UK, one in four people are affected by mental illness. One in three teenage girls suffers from an anxiety or depressive disorder. And suicide is the leading cause of death among the young. Nearly 50% of the population will develop a mental health issue at some point during their lifetime. And the World Health Organization has declared that depression is the leading cause of disability. Mental illness costs the UK economy an estimated £100 billion every year. The number of antidepressants prescribed in England have more than doubled in the last decade, with the most common treatment being SSRIs. Of the 30% of non-responders, 15% will commit suicide. It is surprising that no major breakthrough in drug development for depression and other psychological disorders has happened in the past three decades since the discovery of SSRIs. In the last 20 years, research from the Beckley Foundation and others has found that psychedelics such as psilocybin and LSD can produce dramatically higher rates of efficacy than any other available treatments. They work immediately after a single or a few doses, with benefits lasting weeks, months and maybe longer, with no negative or long-term effect. Psychedelic-assisted psychotherapy could create a truly revolutionary paradigm shift in psychiatry. If it wasn't for the repressively restrictive regulations, psychedelic-assisted therapy could be made available in clinics right away. LSD was considered a new wonder drug when it first appeared in the 1950s. Hundreds of published papers and thousands of patients' reports testified to its promise for a wide range of illnesses. But when in the 1960s LSD escaped the labs into the wider world and, the, and inspired a cultural revolution which included opposition to the Vietnam War, the US government panicked. This resulted in the UN classifying LSD and the psychedelics as Schedule I drugs, i.e. those substances with no medical value and the highest potential for harm. This resulted in the strictest control, which effectively blocked scientific research into their therapeutic value for the next 40 years. In 1998, I set up the Beckley Foundation with the dual aims of firstly researching the potential of these compounds to heal illness and enhance well-being and secondly, to reform global drug policies. It was clear that the prohibitionist approach had not succeeded in its aims and was causing devastating collateral damage, including ill health, violence, corruption, death, and vast cost. The UN conventions orchestrated by the US and signed by over 180 countries worldwide also resulted in the obstruction of scientific research into the therapeutic promise of cannabis and the psychedelics, thereby depriving patients of both valuable tools for healing. Within my own work, I would like to draw attention to just three studies which illustrate the vast potential of psychedelics to form the basis of a paradigm shift in psychiatry. The first being a pilot study with Johns Hopkins University, which used psilocybin-assisted psychotherapy as an aid to overcoming treatment-resistant addiction to nicotine, 
which, by the way, causes over 5 million deaths a year at the global level. This study had a remarkable 80% success rate of complete abstinence at six months post-treatment, which is much higher than any available treatment. The second study was part of the Beckley Imperial Research Program and investigated psilocybin-assisted psychotherapy as a means to treat depression. After two sessions, a dramatic 67% of patients were depression-free after one week, and 42% remained so after three months. These patients have suffered from treatment-resistant depression for an average of 18 years. The third set of studies I would like to draw attention to are the neuroimaging studies we undertook as part of the Beckley Imperial Research Programme which explore the mechanisms underlying the changing states of consciousness brought about by psilocybin and LSD. One of the most striking effects we observed was a decrease in activity within the default mode network, the DMN for short, a collection of widespread brain areas that work together to control consciousness and maintain a sense of self. The DMN disintegrates under LSD and psilocybin, producing the subjective experience of ego dissolution. Such weakening of the censorship, normally exerted by the DMN, also allows for a dramatic increase in connectivity between other areas of the brain and the emergence of a more complex, less predictable and more flexible state of consciousness. In this more fluid, plastic state, long-lasting changes can take place, repressed memories can be accessed, and the rigid and maladaptive thought patterns which underlie psychologically disturbed behaviours like depression, addiction and anxiety can be reset. I and others consider these compounds have shown an amazing propensity to heal and to be non-specific medications. Studies elsewhere have indicated equal problems for psychedelics in the treatment of PTSD, OCD and anxiety. I truly believe psychedelics can lead us toward the new path which could revolutionise psychiatry. However, the present prohibition of these compounds laid out in the UN Drug Convention in 1971, remain to this day unchanged. Although our knowledge of the science and the potential value of these compounds to heal has advanced considerably, an appalling state of affairs. We need to facilitate research into the potential value of psychedelic assisted psychotherapy and, if it is proven successful, open clinics where patients can be treated, reducing both the suffering and the heavy financial burden of mental illness. Our first step must be to reschedule cannabis and the classic psychedelics from Schedule 1 to Schedule 2, so that research can be carried out much more easily and doctors can prescribe to those in need. Let us put health and the reduction of suffering ahead of political expediency and rigid thinking. The time for change is now. Thank you very much.